Today on History X, we help a subscriber understand what happened to their uncle in Turret 2 aboard the famed destroyer USS Johnston. Thank you for checking out History X. My name is Ken Stano, and recently I posted two videos about the discovery of the wreck of the World War II destroyer USS Johnston. For those of you not familiar, the USS Johnston led a small group of tin can destroyers and escorts, known as Taffy 3, in a heroic charge against a massive Japanese naval force that included cruisers and battleships. Out of the many comments I received on those videos, a subscriber simply known as Vegan Conservative, unfortunately they never shared their name, the subscriber was asking what it would have been like for their uncle who was stationed in the 5 inch gun turret just below the bridge on the bow of that renowned Fletcher class destroyer. I was honored that someone chose this channel History X as a source to answer this meaningful and let's face it, important question. You know, wondering what it would have been like for their uncle to be stationed in one of the forward turrets on the celebrated destroyer USS Johnston. Sacrificing themselves in the heat of battle against an incredibly superior Japanese naval force, taking on huge enemy cruisers and battleships prior to themselves being destroyed and sunk during the battle off Samar in the Philippines in 1944. Matter of fact, if you would like to learn more about that incredible battle, please check out the link above. Now, because I am an engineer by degree, I like to get into the details when I make these videos. But in this case, I soon realized I couldn't provide this subject the kind of expertise and respect it deserved. So I reached out to Shane Stevenson, Director of Museum Collections at the Buffalo and Erie County Naval and Military Park. If you're not familiar with Shane's work, he spends his days exploring World War II ships like the Cleveland-class cruiser USS Little Rock, the Gato-class submarine USS Croker, and the Fletcher-class destroyer USS The Sullivans, on display there in Buffalo, New York. How'd you like to have a job like that? Now, because the Buffalo Naval Park has the Fletcher-class destroyer USS The Sullivans on display, I thought Shane would be the ideal resource for this project to give us some insight on what it would have been like to be stationed in the forward turret on the USS Johnston. If you haven't already, please visit the Buffalo Naval Park's YouTube channel in the link I have posted below and subscribe. It's a great way to support their efforts and I'd like to get them 50 new subscribers as a way to say thank you for helping us answer this very important historical question. Now check this out. I'm Shane Stevenson, Director of Museum Collections and Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And today we're going to be doing a pretty cool video with the guys at History X. And I'm going to be answering some questions about these beauties behind me, the 5-inch 38s. Now these 5-inch 38 caliber guns were on most of the destroyers during World War II and certainly all of the Fletcher class destroyers. So USS the Sullivans. That's where I'm standing today. She's been docked here in Buffalo since 1977, and she's one of three tourable vessels in the United States of the Fletcher-class destroyers, and she's one of four in the world that are tourable. Now, during wartime production, 175 of these Fletcher-class destroyers were built. Before we begin answering questions from History X viewers, I'd like to talk a little bit about the 5-inch 38 Mark 12 Modification 1 guns that were on most, if not all, of the Fletcher class destroyers. There are five on each in their original configurations, all running down the center line, and they were named Mount 51, Mount 52, Mount 53, Mount 54, and Mount 55. The muzzle velocity on one of these 5-inch 38s was 2,600 feet per second. And they're lobbing a 55-pound shell with a 25-pound gunpowder casing. All right, so depending on the elevation of the gun, it would be able to travel about 18,000 yards. How many guys would actually be in a 5-inch 38 turret? Right, so obviously it varies, but we usually say about nine crew 
would be in this turret. Starting right back there with the pointer. All right, so the pointer is the guy that controls the elevation. And on this side, on the left side of the barrel, would be the trainer. Right back there. And the trainer is, is the horizontal uh, angle of the gun. You'd also have the gun captain. Right, so the gun captain usually stood on this platform and looking up into that hatch he would peek his head out. Right, so you'd have about nine guys, maybe four or five aside on either side of the barrel. Now the barrel is about 15 feet long so probably half is outside of the turret itself, the encased enclosed turret, and half would be inside. Right, we have the 55 pound projectile along with the 25 pound uh, gunpowder casings. How do they get the actual ammunition, the projectiles, and the gunpowder up into the turret itself? So all of the magazine stores are down below and they're passed up through a series of hoists and what are called handling rooms. Now you'd have four or five crew in this handling room. So the 55 uh, pound shells, the actual uh, destructive projectiles, would be passed up mechanically through this hoist system from the lower decks up into the turret. While the gunpowder, which are here behind me, as examples, those yellow casings right there, those would be passed up manually into the crew that's standing here. There is a, a little hatch, and they would be passed up through that hatch. What is the best rate of fire that you should be getting from the 5 inch 38s? Their goal was always about 20 to 22 rounds per minute, but after hauling the 25 pounds, after grabbing the 55 pound shells, keep that up for more than a couple of minutes, and after the first minute or two, was anywhere from about 12 to 15 rounds per minute. And under the heat of battle, again with the repercussion, the smoke, the disorientation that you'd be experiencing, your body's slowing down, it's hot, it's, you know, you're under great stress and strain, your body and mind would begin to wear out very quickly. Why were these encased here on the Fletcher classes? All five mounts were enclosed. They did offer windows. Right there and there. So mostly it was for crew protection that you enclose these. Right, certainly from uh, flak and shrapnel. Weather could play a role for those pedestal uh, turrets that were just exposed to the sea and the wind. Could do some damage to the mechanics and the barrel itself. But that was the main reason is the crew protection. Well, I want to thank you for watching and I want to thank the guys at History X. This has been fabulous, and I really hope you enjoy this video here from the Buffalo Naval Park talking about the 5-inch 38 turrets. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this video is in response to the comment submitted by a subscriber inquiring about what it would have been like for their uncle stationed in the 52 turret of the USS Johnston. And here at History X, we are thrilled that Shane Stevenson there on the USS The Sullivans at the Buffalo and Erie County Naval and Military Park was willing to help us out. So what happened to your uncle during the battle off Samar where the Johnston sank? And look, I would totally understand since we're talking about the demise of your uncle, the death of your family member, I would totally understand if you turned this video off right here and now. Because as I see it, when it comes to your uncle in turret 52 aboard the USS Johnston, there are three possibilities. Here we see the 52 turret 
intact and trained to the starboard as they were during the battle, as if they are still firing as they lie there in state at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. So unlike the direct hits received by the aft turrets, your uncle's turret wasn't destroyed. However, accounts tell how the bridge had to be abandoned in the middle of the battle due to a fire from a hit that was received, and that is the damage that we see here. A Japanese shell hit below deck, below the turret, which leads us to possibility number one for your uncle. If your uncle was at his station in the turret at the time of this impact, imagine the utter chaos inside that turret to have an explosion like this occur right underneath you. The, the, the concussion would have been unimaginable. And it's assumed many inside the turret would have died due to that shell impact and the resulting fire underneath. Now, possibility number two, your uncle may have survived the impact of that shell, but due to injuries suffered, later went down with the ship and unfortunately drowned. Or possibility number three, survivors from the battle eventually abandoned ship and were forced into the water. But after the sinking of the USS Johnston, those survivors were not immediately picked up. You see, naval leadership feared Japanese submarines were in the area just waiting for U.S. rescue vessels to arrive and pick up the survivors. Therefore, initial requests by American vessels to head to the area of the battle to pick up survivors were denied. At least two days passed before it was deemed safe to head to the area. During that time, many seamen succumbed to their injuries and there were sharks. Of the 327 men aboard the USS Johnston at the time of the battle, 186 men lost their lives. It's assumed that approximately 50 died due to the enemy action during the battle. 92 men went into the water after the ship went down, including Commander Evans, but they were never seen again. And in the two days while adrift waiting for rescue, 45 men died on rafts from their wounds. I want to say it was an honor to create this video, and I was thrilled to receive the help from Shane Stevenson at the Buffalo Naval Park. Again, please click and subscribe to their channel. And if you find World War II related content like the heroics of the destroyer USS Johnson fascinating, please click and subscribe. My name is Ken Stano. Thank you for checking out History X.